Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, and Superintendent Davis. Today, I will be representing the superintendent's budget recommendation for fiscal year 2023, and this is the second of two required budget hearings. In accordance with policy DC, the board takes action on a budget prepared by the superintendent, which includes four aggregate funds. These discrete funds, which are required by governmental accounting standards, allow for the separate tracking of revenues and expenses to ensure public resources are aligned towards intended purposes. I'll quickly review these funds for information purposes. The first of the four funds is the general fund, which is the account used for our daily operations, like salaries, instructional supplies, and maintenance costs. Next is the special revenue fund, which accounts for grants given to Henry County Schools for designated and supplemental purposes. The enrichment enterprising activities as well of our school nutrition and our after school enrichment program. Next is the Capital Projects Fund, which includes the revenues and expenditures related to capital improvements authorized by this board. And finally, there is the Debt Service Fund, which captures revenue and expenses associated with long-term debt incurred to finance capital projects. We'll take a deeper look at the funds, and I'll start with the General Fund. At the top of the slide, you can see the recap of our prior two fiscal years adopted revenues as well as the forecast of revenues for FY23, totaling $445.4 million. I'd like to call your attention to the top right of the slide, where percentages that indicate the composition of our revenues are displayed. Of note is the increasing share of funding that comes from local sources. This is a testament to the current growth of Henry County economy and the growth of this community and it underscores the important role that a quality education plays in communities that are thriving. State funding will continue to contribute more than 50% of our general fund revenues and has been revised since our tentative adoption as additional information has become available. Since the April board meeting, we have received the preliminary funding guidance from the Georgia Department of Education and thus have updated our forecast of state revenues from no growth to growth of $3.4 million year over year. As we anticipated, we saw increases in the funding related to our restoration of austerity, as well as teacher salary increases that were included in the state's 2023 budget. And we saw offsetting activity relating to an increased local five mil share contribution and a $10.8 million decrease in our equalization grant. However, the impacts of the salary increase enrollment growth, and local share contribution ultimately resulted in a more favorable outcome than initially forecast. Turning our attention to local revenue sources, our expectations are consistent with the forecast that was presented in last month's session. We anticipate year-over-year -year revenue growth of at least $32.5 million, assuming the final tax digest, which is available in July, provides at least a 15.5% improvement. With the availability of additional state funds, the superintendent's recommendation has been revised to make additional progress in the priorities and commitments established by the board. <coughs> the final recommendation is adjusted to include $2.2 million of targeted investments in competitive compensation for maintenance and mechanic staff members, psychologists, and middle school graduation specialists. Additionally, job families with a classification relationship to principals will be increased by $2,000 to maintain parity. The final recommendation has also been adjusted to respond to instructional and operational staffing needs identified through consultation with principals. An investment of $2.7 million is recommended to support 15 additional teaching positions to respond to program growth and additional staffing needs, one additional permanent substitute allotment to every elementary school for the 2023 school year, one school-based monitor for every middle school, and two school-based monitors for every high school. In total, the recommendation for additional investments since the tentative adoption by the board is $4.9 million. The difference between the revenue growth afforded by improved revenue outlook from the state and the proposed compensation and staff investments will be balanced through policy DCL assignment. The superintendent's recommendation for general fund expenditures for FY23 totals $446.9 million, resulting in a per-student expenditure of $10,413 per student, which is an increased investment of $627 per student compared to our current fiscal year. 
This recommendation continues our system's persistence in putting resources close to students with 97% of the funds aligned to teaching, learning environment maintenance, and direct student services. Finally, this budget recommendation aligns to the board's expectations of investments in competitive compensation and the strategic action plan. And I will highlight more of these details later. Turning to the other governmental funds that are requiring action tonight, there has been no change in our special revenues projection since the tentative adoption by the board. We anticipate availability of $72.7 million in funding to address the specific needs and programming required per each source of fund. Expenditures are closely aligned, totaling $72.4 million. Regarding capital projects, there has been no change since the tentative adoption. Funds are available from prior bond sale proceeds to cover the anticipated expenditures of $60.9 million. And there has been a small improvement in the debt service fund forecast since the tentative adoption. We now anticipate collections of $89.6 million in collections, and the debt schedule requires $45.1 million of repayments. Having reviewed each of the funds, I want to zoom out for a full picture of the FY23 budget recommendation. As you know, a budget is a fiscal commitment that ensures our stated priorities have resources appropriately aligned. It is through purposeful alignment of resources that the goals of this board, as inspired by the community, can be achieved. This board has led with unified governance, and beginning last December, you gave two clear directives in the prioritization of resources, which included investing in competitive compensation, and investing in high quality educational environments and supports in accordance with the strategic action plan. This board believes in public education and is committed to recruiting and retaining highly effective teachers, leaders, and staff. Aligned to the board's belief, the FY23 budget proposal includes an increase to the current salary scales by 1% for all employees and honor salary steps due to employees for years of service, which can yield an additional 1% to 3%. Informed by data emerging from the compensation and classification study called for by this board, the FY23 recommendation includes additional targeted investments in salaries for teachers and related job families, paraprofessionals, principals, psychologists, school and central office secretaries, and other clerical staff positions, school bookkeepers, school data clerks, nutrition staff, and maintenance and mechanic team members. The targeted investments in competitive compensation included in the FY23 recommendation is nearly $20 million and touches 90% of the full-time workforce, which is an accelerated implementation of the multi-year plan and is informed by market-based research from the compensation and classification study. The study is ongoing and every job family will be evaluated to understand competitive pay in the market. This board believes our students deserve the most effective teachers, leaders, and staff, and you have been consistent in your commitment to continue progress towards a competitive strategy for all job families. Tightly aligned to the strategic action plan adopted by the Board of Education, the recommended investments in high quality instruction and support services includes 133 school-based positions, such as one teaching allotment to every school to promote the implementation of comprehensive STEM programming within each elementary school, and to provide each middle and high school with a teacher allotment to support advancement in this board's expectations around fine arts. Every elementary school will have an additional permanent substitute for the upcoming year. And one campus monitor for every middle school and two campus monitors for every high school will be deployed. There are additional positions anticipated to address school needs and growth in operational and digital infrastructure of the district, including the board's adopted strategic initiatives related to language access, after school enrichment, and the creation of a Henry County Schools Foundation. Additionally, each school will be provided with a one-time allocation of $600 to support purchases of resources to launch or enhance STEM and fine arts programming. Board, your leadership and unified governance allowed our system to approach this budget season with a long-term planning strategy, with a laser focus on investments that deliver on this board's beliefs and commitments to ensure students learn in supportive and secure learning environments, and have access to quality resources, teachers, leaders, and staff. The presented recommendation is aligned to your unified priorities around investing in compensation and strategic plan 
and the strategic plan and was inspired by this community's desires for our school system. As I conclude, I would like to call attention to the budget document that is displayed on the screen, which the board will have the opportunity to take final action on at tonight's business meeting at 7 p.m. Madam Superintendent, that concludes what I've prepared, and I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Ms. Clay. At this time, I would like to um, ask uh, Madam Parliamentarian if there are any uh, members of our community present for um, this budget hearing. Thank you, Dr. Davis. We do not have any community members for public participation for the budget hearing. Thank you, Madam Parliamentarian. Madam Chair, that concludes what we have prepared and turn it back over to you to conclude the budget hearing. Thank you, Dr. Davis, and thank you for that great information, Mrs. Clay. Um, once again, I just want to thank the community members who have joined us uh, this evening. I appreciate your presence here. And at this time, I will close our budget hearing. <laughs>